you got to see this right in the middle of a United Nations meeting where so many people in the United Nations are against Israel. Yusuf, a Christian, the former son, is still the son of Hamas, stood in there, actually sat in there, and literally ambushed them with the truth about Israel, the truth about the government of Hamas, and he knows because his dad is the one in the leadership of Hamas. They were shocked. you got to see the shocked faces as they look around at this one man who stood up in all this group and just basically said, that's a lie. You need to stand with Israel. Check it out. So when you think about the United Nations, so often, so often people just put it in some block or some square peg, square hole. What does it mean to it? This is what it means. World War II happened. The whole world was at war. Hitler was persecuting people all over the world, including persecuting the Jews, wanted to eliminate the Jews from the face of the earth. The, the answer to that was a, a plan that started under Woodrow Wilson, but you know, anyway. And uh, he tried to pr produce the, after World War I, you know, the United Nations, and everybody kind of turned it down, the League of Nations. But eventually it came out in World War, after World War II, we've got to get together as nations and prevent these, these, these lunatics, basically, from starting wars like Hitler did. Well, the whole point was to be able to prevent those kind of things from taking place. Not to take over the world, but to be able to discuss, like our president said when he was at, President Trump, Trump said when he was at the United Nations, so that you can have a good country, and we can have a good country, and you can have a good country, not for the United Nations to rule the world. Well, it's been rigged. The United Nations has been rigged up to this day. It's been rigged against Israel. It's been rigged against what God would have for the world and have for the nation. But I'll tell you who's busting that up, that prophetic word about uh, President Trump being a bulldozer. It's not just him. It's actually Haley's Comet. U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley, this assigned to the United Nations, is saying we're going to deal with this thing and we're going to straighten it out. But first I want you to see how rigged it is. What it is is like this. They take votes. You know, whoever gets the most votes wins. So if they decide they want to be able to, you know, persecute Israel, they take a vote. Or not persecute, basically allow persecution and don't call it persecution. They'll take a vote and say, well, is that persecution, persecution or not persecution? And if the majority says it's not persecution, then that's what they'll say. The United Nations official word would be, this is not wrong. Well, that actually has happened over and over again because there's an unstoppable voting block made up of communist nations and made up of Islamic nations that are against Israel and the future of Israel. But guess what? Oh, it's exciting. I can't wait to tell you. But first, I want you to see this unstoppable voting block so you can understand every time you show up to take a test, you always fail the test if you're, stu you're a student and your name is Israel because they've been against Israel, but they're busting that thing up. But first, let's look at the unstoppable voting block and how it came to pass. Check it out. No matter how you feel about the United Nations, it's the one place on planet Earth where nations get together and attempt to speak with one voice. That's why their resolutions can make a big difference. So when people all around the world see that approximately 40% of the UN Human Rights Council resolutions were against just one country, most of us would assume that country must be a really bad place. Perhaps ruled by, oh, say, a genocidal dictator who kills his own people, or maybe a tyrant continually threatening to annihilate another country. But actually, the country that has been condemned more times than every repressive country on Earth combined is a democracy the only viable democracy in the Middle East, Israel. And with these repeated resolutions against Israel, it's easy to see why so many in the international community perceive Israel as a major cause of world problems. But are all these resolutions really justified? Because whether or not you agree with how Israel is handling its many challenges, when you do a basic comparison, like the number of deaths Israel is responsible for with the number of condemnations they've received, and then make that same comparison with other countries, it paints a surprising picture of a possible double standard. What could explain the enormous imbalance? Quick history lesson. In 1975, Cuba needed to gather support in order to take down the biggest democratic superpower dominating the global schoolyard, the United States. Seeing how the UN was mostly controlled by the democratic superpowers, Cuba, along with other communist nations, finally found a way to even the playing field. Because it just so happened that, at the same time, a number of Muslim countries were looking for new creative ways to gang up on Israel. So the communists realized that by joining the Muslims' anti-Israel coalition, they could create an unstoppable voting bloc inside the UN. 
because with every resolution they passed against Israel, they simultaneously discredited Israel's ally, the United States. So in 1975, the newfound communist Muslim voting bloc spearheaded the passing of a UN resolution that officially stated, Zionism is a form of racism. Yes, Zionism, the movement trying to find ways to protect Jews from racism was redefined as racism, which is kind of like saying the civil rights movement is racism and Martin Luther King is a racist. This is why resolution after resolution after resolution against Israel from 1975 until this day easily passes through the UN. It's amazing, isn't it? That's how it's been up to this day. The original purpose of it was to be able to prevent these kind of things from taking place. Israel has been attacked again and again. Israel is a is peaceful nation. They defend themselves. They never are aggressive. They always defend themselves. Think about Israel. Israel's widest point is like 70 miles wide. That's how small Israel is. You've got to defend yourself. And we've talked about that plenty of times. Well, think about it. When President Donald Trump became president, the prophetic word over him, and we'll have this in the next program, there's a prophecy a commander-in-chief prophecy called the Trump prophecies we'll be talking about, you know, what is God saying about this particular presidency and where it's going. But he put Nikki Haley, Ambassador Nikki Haley, who used to be the governor of the Carolinas, into the United Nations. And she came in there boldly as a believer, boldly as an American, boldly in standing with Israel and begin to set things right. And this leads up to what we're going to tell you in a moment, how this ambush, this literal, not ambush, ambush, but literally show, uh, somebody showed up in the middle of the unstoppable voting block. His name is Yusef. He showed up and he told the truth and it shocked them all. But it's, it began with President Donald Trump appointing uh, Nikki Haley and Nikki Haley saying this. Check it out. Good morning. Um, first of all, as this is the first time I have dealt with this press corps, um, I just want to say that I hope that we can have a lot more conversations and um, continue to do these types of things. Um, but I'll ask that I will respect you if you'll respect me. So as we develop this relationship, um, we'll see how it goes. So the first thing I want to do is talk about what we just um, saw in there. The Security Council just finished its regular monthly meeting on Middle East issues. It's the first meeting like that that I've attended, and I have to say it was a bit strange. The Security Council is supposed to discuss how to maintain international peace and security. But at our meeting on the Middle East, the discussion was not about Hezbollah's illegal buildup of rockets in Lebanon. It was not about the money and weapons Iran provides to terrorists. It was not about how we defeat ISIS. It was not about how we hold Bashar al-Assad accountable for the slaughter of hundreds and thousands of civilians. No, instead the meeting focused on criticizing Israel the one true democracy in the Middle East. I am new around here, but I understand that's how the Council has operated month after month for decades. I'm here to say the United States will not turn a blind eye to this anymore. I am here to underscore the ironclad support of the United States for Israel. I'm here to emphasize the United States is determined to stand up to the UN's anti-Israel bias. We will never repeat the terrible mistake of Resolution 2334 and allow one-sided Security Council resolutions to condemn Israel. Instead, we will push for action on the real threats we face in the Middle East. We stand for peace. We support a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that is negotiated directly between the two parties, as President Trump reiterated in his meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday. The outrageously biased resolutions from the Security Council and the General Assembly only make peace harder to attain by discouraging one of the parties from going to the negotiating table. Incredibly, the UN Department of Political Affairs has an entire division devoted to Palestinian affairs. Imagine that. There is no division devoted to illegal missile launches from North Korea. There is no division devoted to the world's number one state sponsor of terror, Iran. The prejudiced approach to Israeli-Palestinian issues does the peace process no favors, and it bears no relationship to the reality of the world around us. The double standards are breathtaking. Just a few days ago, the United States sought, unsuccessfully, to have the Security Council condemn a terrorist attack to Israel, 
where the terrorists opened fire on people waiting for a bus and then stabbed others. The Security Council would not hesitate to condemn an attack like that in any other country, but not for Israel. The statement was blocked, and that's downright shameful. Israel exists in a region where others call for its complete destruction, and in a world where anti-Semitism is on the rise. These are threats that we should discuss at the United Nations as we continue working toward a comprehensive agreement that would end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But outside of the UN, there is some good news. Israel's place in the world is changing. Israel is building up new diplomatic relationships. More and more countries recognize how much Israel contributes to the world. They are recognizing that Israel is a beacon of stability in a troubled region, and that Israel is at the forefront of innovation, entrepreneurship, and technology technological discovery. It is the UN's anti-Israel bias that is long overdue for change. The United States will not hesitate to speak out against these biases in defense of our friend and ally, Israel. This is setting the pace, literally, the bias against Israel. And when you're against Israel, you're against America because ever, this is, if you look at history, when God wants to discipline a nation, he has its leaders turn against Israel. Why? Because he says, I will punish every, I, I, will, I will bless every nation that blesses you, and I'll curse every nation that curses you. You can find out where you're going with your nation when you find out how your leaders treat Israel. Where our last leader was literally, we talk about that over and over again. As a matter of fact, I want you to see this. This is called Angry Birds. We call it Angry because it was how our president, prior to this administration, treated Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, how he treated Israel. And he had this anger for some reason, towards the Jews and towards the um, the um, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and we're going to see this. And I'll tell you a little bit more. Take a look. You know, you you said the other day to Jeffrey Goldberg in an interview that you plan to be around 20 years from now. Yeah. Therefore, you'll feel responsible if Iran gets nuclear yes. by then. And I just realized, perhaps you plan to be many years more around, if only to postpone the moment that Bibi comes speak at the funeral. <laughs> That was one of my better jokes. You enjoyed the punch, did you? That was, uh, that, that, that was a good joke. Uh, you know, can we skip the part in which you tell me there's nothing personal between you two? Yeah, you know, I, I will tell you this. I, 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 when I'm with Bibi, we have good conversations. They're tough. They're forceful. We disagree. But uh, I enjoy jousting with him. Did you I, enjoy I, I the do. meeting? You remember the meeting four years ago here at the White House when he took the time to... Speak about some chapters in Jewish yeah. history. I could see your jaws locked. Oh, no. I think the, I was probably just uh, uh, hungry and waiting for lunch. <laughs> There's no doubt that, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and I come from different political traditions and have different orientations. Well, you're obviously you're looking at the anger that's there, but Nikki Haley, Nick, they call her Haley's Comet, has come to the United Nations, and President Trump has come to the leadership of America. And instantly, as soon as he became president, he made a phone call to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and said that instantly it was resolved. Now, after this break, I want you to see this right here. This is actually Musab Youssef. Imagine, you know, if you're if you're our leader of a country and your son, you know, who is with you all the way, all the way, knows everything about what's going on finds out everything you're doing is evil, everything you're doing is against the people that you're leading. Well, this happened to the Palestinian people because the leadership they have called Hamas, they didn't get voted in the way we vote in people. Like the majority of America voted in President Donald Trump. It, well, you think about that. Well, that didn't happen in the Palestinian people. Hamas reported, reportedly just pushed their way in and took over. Well, guess what? The, the leader of Hamas's son is Youssef, and he not only got pulled out of that, but he became, he found Jesus, man. He made his, he's, he's, a, he's a believer in Jesus Christ, and he sees the evils going on, and he's the one that ambushed the United Nations. And imagine being in the middle of that unstoppable voting block. You're in a room of people who always say no to Israel and yes to, to communism, yes to Islam, and always says no to Israel. But in the middle of all that, because they're thinking it's an unstoppable, you can't stop us. All of a sudden, Yusuf shows up in the middle of it and starts speaking truth. And you're going to see the shock on their faces. This is so refreshing to see where the UN is, going to ha is being forced to be an honest broker when it comes to the nations. Join us after the break. We're going to show that to you. Can you imagine, John, the shock hmm. 
that we were talking about the early part of this program. You're in the United Nations. You've been getting your way for a long time. You've been lying through your teeth. Lying. Lying continually, thousands of lies against Israel. Accusations. Against, is against the original tent, right, yeah. of the United Nations. You remember when Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu speaking at the United Nations? Oh, yeah. And that stare, how long did that stare last? I was like an hour. Seemed like eternity. He actually took and he looked to every single nation because all the nations gathered there. What a leader. Well, it was like a rebuke from the Lord, you yeah. know, saying Israel's coming in saying, listen, what's your problem? We've been treating you well. That's right. And uh, so uh, here we are to this day where now we have a president who is friends with Israel. So there's never been a bigger supporter of Israel than President Trump and his family. And yeah, his team. Maybe, maybe since Harry Truman, you know. Well, that was a quote from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It is. And so so here, so, so you see the things are shifting. But if you have an unstoppable voting block, in, in other words, every time you carry your test to the teacher, you fail because they have the whole school rigged against you. They're not worried about anything you say because it's the, the number of votes. But guess what? You're going to see at the United Nations where this crew that's in the unstoppable voting block, they're fixing to vote against Israel again. Uh, uh, this particular man, you're seeing his book right, he has a book right now called Son of Hamas. And the reason why he's got a book, his name is, is uh, Masab Youssef. The reason why his book's called Son of Hamas, he is the son of one of the leaders of the government of the Palestinian people, a government mm. that forced their way in. They didn't vote him in. These are the ones that were firing rockets up into yes, the, the southern parts of Israel. and, and From the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip and the ones that were promoting, naming streets after people that have killed uh, Jews. And Putting Jews. children in front of rocket launchers in hopes that when Israel would retaliate and defend themselves, yeah. they would actually hit children. This yeah. is the and we actually people. showed you that on VFN TV where other secular reporters, they were too scared. They, had, they were right on a balcony to be able to point their cameras and right they there. they would not point Because their it camera. would have cost them to do that. Yeah. And that's been prophetic. But listen, I mean, God saw that. That's you know? right. And so not only he has a, a book called The Son of Hamas. It's a great book. I encourage you to read it. But he, in his journey from being the son of the evil government leader, he finds this out over time. You know, you know it takes a while for you to find out that your dad's losing. Like, <laughs> no, it's fine to find. And so when he does, he, you know, he literally comes out. And there's a whole movie about his journey called The Green Prince. Yeah. He spoke at the Jerusalem Post. And you think of the son of the enemy of you, speaks at the Jerusalem Post. And it was amazing. They even gave him a name tag, you know, Green Prince, you know, son of Hamas. Yeah. And he comes in and... He's just a beautiful person. I have so much respect for him because he's not against anything. He's, he is actually for, he is for um, what's right. Yeah. You know, he's for everyone. He's for the people to make it, not for evil people to treat people evilly. As a matter of fact, I want you to take this, this little movie uh, trailer to the Green Prince so you can get a little understanding of who he is. Take a look. This is my chance to be a hero for the sake of the nation. But Allah had other plans for me. We had the right to make the other side feel our pain. Recruiting is an art, a very difficult art. You need to make him betray his own people. He asked me, would you work for us? To collaborate with Israel is the most shameful thing. The first day handling him was the first day of the end of my career. We called him the Green Prince. My father was the top Hamas leader in the West Bank. He had no clue what I was doing. It's like recruiting the son of the Israeli prime minister. Deep in my heart, I was really terrified. A good source needs to be with you, not against you. You are a target, and you can get killed anytime. I really felt responsible for Mossad as a source and as a human being. I was on my own. He was in real trouble. I start to realize that people are dying because of this lie. This is a big game. No one else knows about you. You will start to lose your sense of reality. He's not just a source. He was there for us all the time. That kind of bond is impossible to break. Al-Qaeda immediately issued a death sentence for him. Go underground, don't come back, ever. I am not who you think I am. 
So this is who we're talking about. I want you to get a good, a good buy. You can find that on uh, Prime, Amazon Prime, probably get it on Netflix, go to your local store and buy it. Buy his book, it's an amazing book. I got a chance to read it when I was on a sabbatical and I was just like, I love this guy. <laughs> How many people, John, just don't stand up for what they believe That's and right. they allow people to be ran over and he sees this injustice. He risked his life. He still Everything. is. And so he walks in the middle of this unstoppable voting block, all these people that are always against Israel and they're speaking this junk about Palestine, Palestine, Palestinian people that's not true and the Hamas thing about them because you know obviously God loves the Palestinian people but it's governmental people. Yeah. And he's right, he's right in the middle of them and he, to their surprise, and watch their faces because the unstoppable voting block starts looking at Yusuf and he boldly tells the truth about what's going on. Let's join him now at the United Nations. Israel, the occupying power, continues with its colonial policy and its daily violations. It continues to abuse, to arbitrarily detain, to carry out ethnic cleansing, steal land and natural resources, uproot trees, steal money, Israeli activity to Judaize Jerusalem, demolition of homes, confiscation of land and property, spoiling of natural resources. Racist violations, by Israel. Israel continues to commit various forms of human rights violations in Palestine. Israel, the occupying power, is advancing in its efforts of mass colonization and continued apartheid, put an end to this colonialist regime. Apartheid, atrocities and massive destruction inflicted on the Palestinian people. War crimes, crimes against humanity, ethnic cleansing and state terror. Thank you, United Nations Watch. Shukran Sayyid Rais. I take the floor on behalf of the UN Watch. My name is Mus'ab Hassan Youssef. I grew up in Ramallah as a member of Hamas. I address the words to the Palestinian Authority, which claims to be the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. I ask, where does your leg legitimacy come from? The Palestinian people did not elect you, and they did not appoint you to represent them. You are self-appointed. Your accountability is not to your own people, this is evidenced by your own total violation for their human rights. In fact, the Palestinian individual and their human development is the least of your concerns. You kidnap Palestinian students from campus and torture them in your jails. You torture your political rivals. The suffering of the Palestinian people is the outcome of your selfish political interest. You are the greatest enemy of the Palestinian people. If Israel did not exist, you would have no one to, to blame. Take responsibility for the outcome of your own actions. You fan the flames of conflict to maintain your abusive power. Finally, you use this platform to mislead the international community, to mislead the Palestinian society, to believe that Israel is responsible for the problem you create. Thank you. T, totally <laughs> truth. Awesome. I'm so proud of him. I'm so grateful for him and his, you know, just being honest. And he's and you hear his voice saying, "I care about the Palestinian people. You don't care about the Palestinian That's right. people. If you didn't have Israel to blame, you would no, have nobody, nobody to, blame. to blame. You made this whole thing up. You're. I mean, he knows he's actually the son of Hamas. Literally, his dad is in the leadership of this government." And and that's how he knows. Did you see their faces when they're going like Who? stunned, Put shocked? This? Who is this guy? You're looking at doing? truth. You're looking at truth, just invading lies, lies and lies and lies and lies and lies. And all of a sudden, they were so shocked. They, they didn't think truth would ever come. In the midst the of all came. these all these countries that are actually doing atrocities, like yes. Venezuela and, and Iran, Iran and North Korea, North Korea, all those different ones, Venezuela. And so you're looking at. You're looking at, that was just what truth just invaded. But that came because of prayer. It came because of God you know, obviously responding to prayer. It came because America said we want President Donald Trump to be our president. It came because our president is a friend with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The Angry Bird season is over. We're friends of Israel. We're going to defend Israel. And it came because President Donald Trump put Haley's Comet, hmm. ambassador, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley in leadership and she came in there and she said it you heard her it's just not gonna happen 
Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.